It's not bad. It really is not bad. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Sam's Home Kitchen, where I bring to you budget-friendly recipes with sustainability in mind. So as we're recording in March 2023, the most popular video I have on this channel has hit a milestone. We have cracked 10,000 views. First of all, I just really want to say that I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to continue on this journey and keep delivering values that I believe in. Going back to the video, it is about chickpea tofu that I made a while ago and so many comments here, 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 asking about the texture of tofu, how we can make tofu a lot firmer, which inspires today's video. Instead of using chickpea, I opted for another type of grain, which is lentil. Done some research and this recipe really is a compilation, incorporate a fair few different techniques that I found. So I hope you enjoy it. Before getting to the recipe, if you like food, if you like saving money through cooking, if you like to be inspired to be more frugal, I have a video like this coming out every two weeks to remind people of the impact that we have on the environment. Feel free to subscribe to the channel down here and let's go on this journey together. So with our lentil tofu, all we need is three ingredients. First of all, some water. Next, lentils. I've got a mix of yellow and green lentil here, but really any color lentil works just fine for the recipe. And then just some salt to season. Three ingredients and that is all. Cannot be any simpler. To start with, as per always, we are going to measure with a scale to be really precise and also it allows us to up or downscale the recipe super easy. To yield about 900 grams of lentil tofu, we're going to measure out 180 grams of lentil. So we know that when we put in one part dried lentil, it's going to return five eggs of tofu. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, green means good, right? Next, we want about two to three times of weight in water. Doesn't have to be super precise though. This is really just to hydrate our lentil. Here's some I prepared earlier. You can see that the hydrated lentil is about twice the size of the dried ones. You want to soak the lentils for at least two hours, ideally overnight, so they get plumped up and softened. Next, grab a colander and a bowl. We want to drain off the soaking water to get rid of dust and impurity. So many recipes I see online insist on only red lentils can be used for tofu. I call that a crock of shit. Something's going on, I can smell it. Yes, it's a very distinct smell. It's a smell of bullshit. See, I got a mix of lentil colors here and it works just fine. Drain, 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 shake, shake, shake. Look, this water might look a little bit nasty, but your plant's gonna love it, so don't toss it out my boo. Put our lentil bath water away, and next, we need to set up a blender to blitz it all up. Before we get blending, make sure to give the lentil a last rinse to wash off anything that is still clinging on. Lentils in the blender jug. And now we want four times dry weight of our lentil in water. So that is 180 by four, which is 720 grams of water. Jug in position, lid on and blitz away. The reason we soak the lentil is so that the lentil hydrates and softens to make it easier to blend. Turn the blender on high and blend it for a good three to five minutes until it's nice and smooth. We want all lentils to be broken down and we should be left with a mixture that is uniform in consistency with no obvious clumps or bits left. It's giving like a pre-filtered soy milk kind of vibe. Different to what we did with chickpea tofu, we are not draining the pulps out this time. Instead, pour all of the liquid into a saucepan. Give it a good scraping because we don't like wasting. Next step, we bring the whole thing over to the stove, saucepan on, and we want the heat to be kept at low. While the liquid is heating up, Make sure that we are consistently stirring to prevent it from solidifying on the bottom to get burnt. Here, add in about five grams of salt to season the tofu. Keep stirring the liquid and in less than five minutes, you should see it thickening up like what you can see here. Keep stirring and make sure that you are scraping the bottom of the pot off consistently. Once it starts to bubble and gets to this consistency, we can turn the heat off. Now, grab a glass or plastic container that is smooth on the surface and we want to use it as a mold to form the tofu. Pour the lentil liquid in. Not the most glorious looking now, but trust in the process, it is so worth it. Scrape your scrape, don't hold back and get it all out of the system. I mean, saucepan. Even the tofu out with our spatula, give it a tap to steadily if you like. Once all done, 
lid on and let the tofu cool down before putting into the fridge for at least two hours. Two hours later, we've got our tofu all chilled and solidified now. The texture here is firm to touch and very, very, very convincing. I'm so excited to dig into this. Flip it out onto a chopping board. I then cut it in half. Look at this texture here. There are some minor inconsistency, but I can tell you this stuff is firm. I put half back and took a quarter for my lunch. With the quarter piece of tofu, I cubed it up for easier handling. Just check out the texture here. Very firm and easy to handle. I am so impressed. For lunch, I oiled up my cast iron pan thinking I'll make a crispy tofu snack thing. Tofu in and it instantly starts to sizzle. When I was flipping them, I found that these tofu crisp up very very well, but the crust don't really stay on, they kind of just melt off the tofu and remain in the pan. Not too sure if a non-stick pan would do a better job here. To me, pan frying doesn't quite work out for the equipment I have. A couple of nights later though, I threw these tofu in the oven and added them into some noodle soup. Firmed up very very well and it was a success. From what I can see, oven or air fryer seems to be the way to go if not having it fresh. The cost rate down is as below. 180 grams of lentil at $3.50 a kilo equals to 63 cents. 720 grams of water is pretty much free. 5 grams of salt at 90 cents a kilo equals to 4.5 cents. Altogether, 900 grams of lentil tofu costed us 63.45 cents to make. All right, and there we have it. That is our lentil tofu done right here. I'm going to dig in and just let you know how it tastes like. My honest opinion, does it taste like tofu? Um, not exactly. To me, the flavor kind of reminds me of mashed peas. It is firm in texture, but at the same time, it is a lot easier to break apart compared to tofu. I kind of see this that if you got air fryer at home or just crank the oven on and then give it that really nice crispy skin on the outside, that will contain the tofu cubes a lot better. I can totally see this as replacement of crispy tofu or there are dishes such as pi dan tofu. I think any dishes that requires little manipulation of tofu, we can substitute them with these. And obviously the purpose of this is instead of buying, we can make these at home, save money, save on packaging and really just be a lot more environmental conscious. All right, that is all I got for you today. I really enjoy making lentil tofu and I would really, really encourage you to give it a try. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite tofu dish is and see if this can become a replacement for you. If you like the video, give it a like and consider subscribing. I have a new video coming out every two weeks. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.